the Holy Trinity, with the Virgin and St. John and donors is a fresco by the early Italian Renaissance painter Masaccio. It is located in the Dominican Church of Santa Maria Novella, in Florence. History The Trinity is thought to have been created by Masaccio sometime between 1425 to 1427. He died in late 1428 at the age of 26, or having just turned 27, leaving behind a relatively small body of work. This painting was one of his last major commissions, and is considered to be one of his masterpieces. Location The fresco is located along the middle of the basilica's left aisle. Although the configuration of this space has changed since the artwork was created, there are clear indications that the fresco was aligned very precisely in relationship with the sight lines and perspective arrangement of the room. At the time, particularly a former entrance way facing the painting, in order to enhance the trompe l'oeil effect. There was also an altar, mounted as a shelf ledge between the upper and lower sections of the fresco, further emphasizing the reality of the artifice. Commissioners and donors Not much is known about the details of the commission. No contemporaneous documents naming the altarpieces patron have been found. The two donor portraits included in the fresco, one figure kneeling on either side of the archway, have not been positively identified. The persons depicted are almost certainly contemporary Florentines, either the persons who funded the work, or relatives or close associates. According to the established conventions of such depictions, it is generally, but not universally, assumed that they were probably still alive at the time of the artwork's commissioning, presumably. The representations in the painting serve as relatively accurate likenesses of their actual appearance at the time when the portraits were created. The leading theories as to their identity favor two local families, either the Lenzi or, for at least one of the figures, a member of the Berti, who were a working-class family from the Santa Maria Novella quarter of Florence. According to recently discovered records of the Berti family, they owned a tomb at the foot of the fresco, and it has been suggested that they might have had a particular devotional loyalty to veneration of the Holy Trinity. Other sources mention a Lenzi tomb near the altar, with the inscription, Dominico di Lenzo, a suor in 1426 as well as other Lenzi decorations in the chapel at that time, and assume the donor portraits to be posthumous images of Domenico, based on the full profile pose used for the figures. In the Florentine dating system of that time, the new year began on March 25, and factoring in the conversion from Julian to Gregorian calendars Domenico's death, as recorded, would have been on 19 January 1427. It has been hypothesized that Fra Alessio Strozzian or Filippo Brunelli she may have been involved, or at least consulted, in the creation of Trinity. Brunelleschi's work on linear perspective and architecture certainly inspired the painting, and this is clearly demonstrated within Masaccio's work. Fra Alessio's involvement has been posited more on the matter of the appropriate depiction of the Holy Trinity, according to the preferences and sensibilities of the Dominican order. However, there is, to date, no concrete evidence for the direct involvement of either of these two persons and due to the lack of documentation about the exact circumstances of the piece's creation. Theories about third-party involvement in the creative process remain speculative. Giorgio Vasari and Cosimo I around 1568 Cosimo I, then Duke of Florence, commissioned Giorgio Vasari to undertake extensive renovation work at Santa Maria Novella, in keeping with the tastes and religious politics of the time. This work included reconfiguring and redecoration of the chapel area in which Masaccio's fresco was located. Vasari had already written about Masaccio, including a highly favorable mention of this specific work, in his Vite. When it came time to implement the planned renovations of the chapel containing Trinity, circa 1570, Vasari chose to leave the fresco intact and construct a new altar and screen in front of Masaccio's painting, leaving a small gap, and effectively concealing and protecting the earlier work. 
While it seems reasonably clear that it was Vasari's deliberate intention to preserve Masaccio's painting, it is unclear to what extent Du Cosimo and or other concerned parties were involved in this decision. To decorate the new altar, Vasari painted a Madonna of the Rosary, the image is still extant, but has been moved to a different location within the church. Rediscovery and subsequent history Masaccio's Holy Trinity was rediscovered when Vasari's altar was dismantled during renovations in 1860. The crucifixion, the upper part of the fresco, was subsequently transferred to canvas, and relocated to a different part of the church. It is unclear from available sources whether the lower section of the fresco, the cadaver tomb, remained unknown or was deliberately omitted during the 1860s construction work. Restoration was done to the crucifixion section of the painting at that time. To replace missing areas of the design, mostly architectural details around the perimeter of the work, while the painting was in damaged condition when rediscovered, it is also likely that further damage was caused by the transfer from plaster to canvas. In the 20th century, the cadaver tomb portion of the work was rediscovered still in situ, and the two halves were reunited in their original location in 1952. Leonetto Tintori undertook restoration work on the combined hull during 1950-1954. Description Dimensions The painting is approximately 317 centimeters wide and 667 centimeters high. This gives an overall vertical to horizontal proportion of about 2 to 1. The ratio between the upper and lower sections of the work is very roughly 3 to 1. Altar Originally, the design included an actual ledge used as an altar physically projecting outward from the now blank band between the upper and lower sections of the fresco, further enhancing the sense of depth and reality in the work. Constructed as a pillared shelf tilde 5 feet above the floor and estimated to be about 60 centimeters wide, the altar table's appearance would have been intended to match and or complement the painted architecture, its facing edge and upper surface integrating with the fresco's steps and archway, and its supporting pillars both real and illusory, combining with the shadows caused by the overhang to create a crypt-like effect for the tomb beneath. The upper section of the fresco still retains traces of candle smoke and heat effects from use of this altar. Figures The painted figures are roughly life-sized. For an adult of average height facing the painting, their eye line would have been slightly above ground level in the work, with death in the form of the crypt and skeleton directly front of them, and the promise of salvation above. Damaging and restoring over the course of time and events, the fresco has been damaged and subsequently restored. Much of the outer edge of the upper section, mainly architectural detail, is replacement work. Some regions of new paint can be clearly identified by differences in color, visual texture and detail, and in certain places, by apparent cracks along the boundary between the original fresco surface and areas of the design where the original surface is entirely absent and was repainted. Lower section The lower section, depicting a memento mori, in the form of a cadaver tomb, has also lost significant paint, but the restoration work there has been more restrained and less extensive. This is probably due, at least in part, to the fact that the lower half of the fresco was not recovered until the mid-20th century. By this time, standard practice in restoration had become more conservative, with a stronger emphasis on preserving and revealing the authentic work of the original artist, whereas earlier restorations tended to have more focus on producing an aesthetically pleasing recreation of the artwork. As far as can be determined from available records, at the time when this painting was created no large-scale Roman-style coffered barrel vault, triumphal arch or otherwise, had been constructed in Western Christendom since late antiquity. Notable characteristics The Trinity is noteworthy for its inspiration taken from ancient Roman triumphal arches and the strict adherence to recently developed perspective techniques. 
with a vanishing point at the viewer's eye level so that, as Viserys describes it, a barrel vault drawn in perspective, and divided into squares with rosettes that diminish and are foreshortened so well that there seems to be a hole in the wall. This artistic technique is called trompe which means deceives the eye, in French. The fresco had a transforming effect on generations of Florentine painters and visiting artists. The sole figure without a fully realized three-dimensional occupation of space is the majestic god supporting the cross, considered an immeasurable being. The kneeling patrons represent another important novelty, occupying the viewer's own space, in front of the picture plane, which is represented by the ionic columns and the Corinthian pilasters from which the fane vault appears to spring. They are depicted in the traditional prayerful pose of donor portraits, but on the same scale as the central figures, rather than the more usual diminution, and with noteworthy attention to realism and volume. Interpretation. Several diverse interpretations of the fresco have been proposed. Most scholars have seen it as a traditional kind of image, intended for personal devotions and commemorations of the dead. Although explanations of how the painting reflects these functions differ in their details. The iconography of the Trinity, flanked by Mary and John or including donors, is not uncommon in Italian art of the late 14th and early 15th centuries, and the association of the Trinity with a tomb also has precedence. No precedent for the exact iconography of Masaccio's fresco, combining all these elements, has been discovered. However, the figures of the two patrons have most often been identified as members of the Lenzi family or, more recently, a member of the Berti family of the Santa Maria Novella Quarter of Florence. They serve as models of religious devotion for viewers but, because they are located closer to the sacred figures than the viewers are, they also lay claim to special status. The cadaver tomb consists of a sarcophagus on which lies a skeleton. Carved in the wall above the skeleton is an inscription, Io fu i g i a quel che voi s i e t e quel c h i o sono vo i a n c or s a r e t e. This memento mori underlines that the painting was intended to serve as a lesson to the viewers. At the simplest level the imagery must have suggested to the 15th century faithful that, since they all would die, only their faith in the Trinity and Christ's sacrifice would allow them to overcome their transitory existences. According to American art historian Mary McCarthy, the fresco, with its terrible logic, is like a proof in philosophy or mathematics, God the Father, with his unrelenting eyes, being the axiom from which everything else irrevocably flows.